Gilson B. Ponce is something of an enigma in the games industry. He's a lone indie dev who somehow managed to release four games on the PlayStation 4, despite nobody knowing who he is, despite his games being utter garbage, and despite him being a total weirdo. The man published an accolades trailer for his games that was just a montage of YouTubers saying his name, hence why I'm pretty sure that I'm pronouncing his name wrong on purpose. People ask how so many shit games get onto the PS4 these days. Ponce has four and counting. Sony ostensibly has strict requirements for public publishing games, so widespread speculation is that Ponce is either some Sony executive's son who gets to post his macaroni yard on the company storefront, or he's got blackmail photos of Sony's president shagging a goat. Hell, Gilson apparently has so much pull over at Sony that they let him package his games together and sell it as THE ULTIMATE EPIC BUNDLE! This is a thing that you can buy. For $60! Ponce's library currently consists of 2017's Spear of Destiny the Kaiseki, 2018's Sword of Fortress the Onamusum, 2019's Samuel the Legacy of Ophiuchus, and new this year 2020's Shadow the Ronin Revenge to the Samurai. I did not stutter on those names, Mr. Ponce does not like punctuation. My initial plan was to do these games separately, but apparently Mr. Ponce is prone to releasing roughly the same damn game over and over, like he's the second coming of Ninja Bread Man. So I've opted to cover all four of his Dark Souls wannabe clone games at once, and we'll go in chronological order to see how Mr. Ponce has evolved his craft over four years. We'll start with his first PS4 game, Spear of Destiny the Kaiseki. Fun fact, kaiseki is the word for a traditional Japanese multi-course dinner. If this turns out to be Dark Souls crossed with Cooking Mama, that would be the tits. The game begins with a hilariously awkward text-to-speech introduction that shares Ponce's hatred of punctuation. Now monsters and orcs dominate these lands with complete freedom without anyone to confront them. Only a remnant member of the Light Swords believes in this ancient story. He travels through different places in search of the legendary Spear of Destiny. A mystical world has been invaded by monsters and you need to find the Spear of Destiny to stop them. Chapter 1, Ike Siaki. Fun fact, Ike Siaki is not a word in any language, but if you remove the first I, you get the name of a Brazilian cosmetics company. I'm starting to think that Mr. Ponce just bashes random buttons on his keyboard and lets autocorrect name all of his crap. You play as some dude in armor with a sword in the middle of an empty field. You're told to collect all the relics, kill all the enemies, and find your horse. A marker pops up for the first relic's location, so I run to it. And run to it. There's a stamina meter in the corner that keeps you from running for very long. There appears to be absolutely nothing else in this sandbox map. There are no NPCs, no other enemies. Literally all you do is run towards the marker. At least this gives me time to test the controls. Square jumps. Square jumps. Everyone else uses X. R2 is your only attack, a sword swing with no combos, L2 blocks, and circle dashes to the side. I just wanted to lay all that out so you'd understand in advance how basically zero options you have in combat. You get one weapon with one attack, and that's it. You reach the relic and it spawns a skeleton monster. You just wail on it and it dies. Then a new marker appears and you run to the next relic while jack all happens. The second skeleton gets a few shots in, but again, I wail on him, he dies. And then I walk to the next relic. But first a detour to a healing item that has spawned between fights. A half sunk into the ground, burning cross. Yeah, not touching that one. The controls feel sluggish, the frame rate jitters like crazy, and there's screen tearing all over the place. I'm starting to think this is not a good game. This third skeleton knight dude you run into knocks off massive chunks of your health whenever he lands a hit, so I get killed and sent back to start. So run to bad guy, fight, and hope I don't die is literally the entire game. Great. I took several cracks at the game, and they all went this way. Kill the first two enemies, third one caves my face in. Enemies block your attacks at random with no way to predict it or get through, their attacks are just as fast as yours, and I'm not sure the enemies even flinch when they're hit. You even try to go to attack, and there's a very good chance that you'll get hit back. I started trying every strategy that I could think of to survive this fight. Roll behind him and stab him in the back? Doesn't work. The enemies instantaneously rotate in place and constantly track you perfectly. Block his attacks and move in? Doesn't work. Your block almost seems halfway effective on some enemies, but most foes just punch right through it. Bait out his attacks, dodge away, and then attack? Doesn't work. Enemy attacks are fast, and there's a huge lag to the dodge button. Barring precognition on your part, there's no dodging attacks on purpose. I could always try running away. 
It was worth a shot. Bottom line, I can't figure out how you get past the first 10 minutes of the game, what's implied to be the tutorial. A rational player at this point would figure they're missing something and start looking for weaker enemies to grind and level up, or would look for better armor and weapons, while a rational gamer would be shit out of luck. Because I wandered around the overworld looking for anything else to do, the game world appears to be completely barren. There is not one damn thing existing in the entire map, apart from the objectives and health packs that are marked on the screen at any given time. Oh, there are houses, little farms that seem endlessly copy-pasted where you can't walk through clear gaps because the hitboxes are screwy, but you won't find another living soul, item pickup, optional enemy, side quest, or thing to interact with in any minute capacity anywhere. Kind of feels like our quest to save this land with the spirit of destiny is a waste of time, given there's nobody in the land to save. If you wander far enough, you hit the absolute edge of the map, where the land abruptly drops off into a great black abyss. Confirmation that Gilson is a flat earther, perhaps? Or you can find some- JESUS CHRIST, YOU CAN WALK ON WATER! One of my runs I tried holding down the attack button just to see if there was some kind of a charge up move, and don't ask me how, but just holding down the attack button killed the third enemy, and the fourth, and the fifth. I held down block and attack and the enemies just sat nearly still getting knocked the hell out. I have no idea why this worked. It's like Drake of the 99 Dragons all over again, you get further by playing like a stupid person. Unfortunately, my master plan of role-playing Leroy Jenkins did not work on the sixth relic. It spawns a troll with a massive attack range who kills you in one hit whether you're blocking or not. And while I think I managed to get back to this troll for a rematch one time, my just hold attack plan does not work for every attempt at the game. The best playthrough I was able to find for the game online, spent a few hours trying to get past this troll, and then gave up. General consensus online is that this first level is impossible. Nobody has posted footage or proof of having found the horse or even getting past this troll. I don't even know how long this first level goes. According to the game's achievements, almost 1% of players have beaten the first level, and a total 0.5% of players have finished the game, but I'm not sure how much you can trust the achievements. Look up a game called Journey of the Light sometime. A Steam scammer made a puzzle game that people eventually hacked open and found the code had no win condition. So when people started calling for the dev's ass, he created fake accounts and hacked the game achievements to make it look like the game was beatable. So yeah, 0.5% of people beat the game? Blow it out your ass! Well, somehow Spear of Destiny didn't prompt a restraining order from Sony against Ponce, so let's take a look at his second game released a year later, Sword of Fortress the Onamusum. According to Google, Onamusum is not even close to being a real word in any language. From Calamity comes the existence. So now Gilson is inventing quotes attributed to his own made-up creations that mean absolutely nothing. Allow me to recite a quote that has just as much bearing on what's going on. <clears throat> Papa's got batarangs. The game opens with a cutscene showing your character fighting knights and dragons and shit, and Gilson's name appears over and over again for different credits. You can't skip this cutscene, and then every time you start a game, it shows Gilson's name in the credits a few more times. How does one suck this badly and still wind up with the ego of Hideo Kojima? Once again, we're a knight in a mystical land, only this time they can't be bothered to give us a storyline. You just start headed to the objective marker, and sweet crap, why do you move so damn slow? It feels like you walk at a snail's pace even when you're running, which makes basic navigation of the overworld feel supremely tedious. Much like the last game, you're given an objective marker. This one leads to a shrine where an energy dragon rises up out of the ground for no apparent reason. And then it says, in my discovered. In my. Dumb bastard seriously put a space in the middle of the word enemy. To go any further into the game, you have to fight this big ass knight with a hammer. So now it's time for an epic confrontation. I know that the Dark Souls games prioritize careful dodges and attacks, so we'll just carefully. What? I barely got grazed by the hammer's handle, and I'm dead in one hit. Asshole. So take one hit, and you respawn at the beginning of the game. Yes, Gelson, I know that you made the game. Don't remind me. 
My second crack at fighting this knight, I figured out that you can duck under his attacks, so much for the high ground, but the controls feel way unresponsive. There seems to be a cooldown to you being able to do anything after you've launched an attack, and the second time that I tried to duck the knight, the duck just flat out didn't work, and I got killed. So your controls will just outright refuse to respond multiple times in the middle of combat. This is a joke. What is the point of lugging around this damn armor if it can't take a single hit? And there's no block button this time around. As if it mattered the last game. Part of the problem with the controls is that the game still has a stamina system much like Spear of Destiny did, but this game doesn't have a meter to tell you when it's low or refilled, and it seems to run out after performing a few actions. All you get is the controller vibrating when you're out of stamina, so trying to plan your moves is nigh impossible. You just keep freezing out of nowhere! Even though I knew that I'd find nothing, I tried ignoring the objective markers and roaming the countryside looking for items or smaller enemies to grind even though there aren't any stats, anything to try and help me progress. And after roaming this generic ass giant map for what felt like a small eternity, I finally stumbled across... NOTHING! ABSOLUTELY NOTHING! Well, I'd tell a lie. I found some houses that you could tell were half sunk into the ground because their doors were sticking out of the floor, and I found some houses that were so grievously misassembled by Mr. Ponce that all the fireplaces were on the outside. I didn't find a damn thing that you can interact with. Visiting shrines out of order does nothing. Nothing spawns in the game world until you've been dragged by the ass and killed all the enemies and hit all the objective markers immediately preceding it. If I don't kill this knight, there's no video game. And can somebody explain to me why it's always raining and storming when the sky is always completely clear? You quickly notice that your character is carrying a bow and arrows, and you start to think that maybe there's a ranged attack so you can land some hits without dying immediately. The game just doesn't tell you how to switch weapons. The game seems to think that a bow can only fire about 10 feet ahead of you, but hell, at least it's something. I can finally take that rat bastard. It's time for the rematch of the century. Let's do this! What fresh strain of bull hockey is this? Is this some kind of masochistic joke? Die, motherfucker, die! I spent five solid minutes pumping this douche full of probably a hundred arrows, and despite him seemingly flinching at each shot to confirm that I was hitting him, it didn't even piss him off. Unless the arrows that I've already shot into him are blocking my hits, this should not happen! Why are the arrows passing right through him as he flinches? Why can I shoot about a foot over his shoulder and it still seems to count as a hit? And more pressingly, WHY WON'T YOU DIE?! Well, eat shit. The first enemy is immortal, and the game's impossible. Spear of Destiny was garbage, but between drastically worse movement and not being able to kill a single enemy, this broken heap of ass makes Spear of Destiny look like a masterpiece. The one thing you can say about these games is that Bennett Foddy would love them, and if you don't know who Bennett Foddy is, good. He made Getting Over It, a physics platforming game that's insanely difficult where he lectures you about how hard games are the meaning of life and all other forms of media are garbage. So Sword of Fortress isn't a cursed blight upon my PS4, it's staring at the face of God. What games are the other so-called hardcore gamers playing? Dark Souls? Cuphead? That's pussy shit! Sword of Fortress, man! This game is to Cuphead what Cuphead is to Tigger's Honey Hunt. You're not a real gamer unless you can hang with this. You think those 0.4% of players who got the game's platinum trophy beat the game because of hacks? No! It's because they're more mad than you, sissy boy! This is the real shit! Next up is Sam Ale, The Legacy of Ophiuchus. Gilson actually specifically advertises Sam L on the PlayStation Store as being the hardest video game ever made. 
How do you get harder than the first enemy being unkillable? Do you just start off dead or die to malaria before you even reach the first enemy? I really need to stop talking before I give him ideas. I will be present throughout spring, summer, autumn, and winter. I am shaped to be eternal. Samuel. I didn't recognize you without crap in your pants. Betty. Again, the game opens with a cinematic cutscene of in-game footage, only this one is almost constantly suffering from dreadful screen tearing. Gilson couldn't get the game running right on his dev machine, what the hell chance do I have? This time your generic medieval knight avatar has some kind of grey monster head. Honestly, it looks like you're playing as Darth Vader without his helmet, complete with glowing red sword that's just on fire for some reason. This time you start the game spawned right next to a dragon, so I immediately fumble around on the controls trying to figure out how you ride it because this game doesn't have a control listing. Not only can the dragon seemingly not fly, it just kind of hovers without changing elevation, but the dragon has no attacks. Pressing the attack buttons just swings your own sword on the dragon's back. Not to sound ungrateful, but what is the point of having a dragon that can't fly or spit fire? I'm pretty sure you actually move slower riding the dragon than you do on foot! Anyway, I start galloping across the countryside on my scaly friend who can't do anything when I suddenly realize this game doesn't have any objective markers. There are no towns, no structures, I have absolutely no idea what I'm supposed to do. Wanna know why? The objective markers are freaking glitched and disappear if you're riding the dragon, so using it actively makes the game impossible. Oh, and I've spontaneously combusted. I hate to trouble you, but I am on fire. Yeah, the big new innovation of the game is that the world operates on a day to night cycle, only the nights feel two or three times longer than the days, and an entire day only lasts a few minutes like we're on Five Nights at Freddy's time. And when it's night time, the entire game turns pitch black to where you can't see a damn thing that you're doing. To try and compensate for the darkness, the scabbard of your sword will just abruptly catch fire for no reason at night, but even with the light source you can only see about two feet ahead of you, so a fat lot of good it does. Eventually four or five objective markers appear, they only spawn if you turn to face them it turns out, and they all point to monsters that you can fight. I follow one to an enemy and just guess what happened, go on guess, guess, GUESS! You die in one hit. Doesn't matter what enemy type you're fighting, if it grazes you once, game over. You have a dodge roll, but for some inconceivable reason, the dodge roll button also triggers a bullet time ability that slows you and the enemies down, and pressing the dodge button doesn't always dodge. In fact, most of the time it quite painfully fails to dodge, and you die in one hit! Well, fighting the enemies head on isn't going to work, but maybe there's a way to fight them on the dragon. I tried pointing myself straight at an objective marker, getting on the dragon, and running forward until I find an enemy, because there's no way the dragon dies in one hit, right? Well, not only does it not work, but eventually I notice that using the dragon is permanently glitching objective markers out of existence until there are no markers left and I'm just stuck. I actually have to reset the entire game and sit through another minute of Gilson B. Ponce credits because the pause menu has no quit button. Okay, plan B. I find an enemy and then run away back to my dragon while they follow me. And this plan actually worked, except, and I could not make this up, riding the dragon makes enemies disappear. I jump on the dragon, enemy vanishes. I jump back off, and he's back. Enemy's gone. Enemies back. Enemies gone. Enemies back. So fighting on the dragon is actually impossible because the game is so damn glitchy. And of course the overworld is empty apart from the monsters. Gilson didn't even bother with any buildings this go around. No buildings, no items, just you and rat bastard enemies and the bullshit eyes glitch dragon! I was just about to give up and move on to the last game because I had tried everything and couldn't fight the enemies, but I realized that I hadn't tried blocking yet, even though blocking in Spear of Destiny didn't do poot. So just imagine my surprise upon finding out that in Samhale, if you're holding down the block button, you don't take any damage. You can get hit while launching attacks, you can get nailed while in the middle of the obnoxiously long animations for throwing out multiple hits. Doesn't matter if your avatar is actually blocking or not, you hold down L1, you're invincible. Hardest game ever made, huh? No spawn of heaven or earth can smite me! And now I'm killing all the enemies without breaking a sweat. 
Out of sheer boredom and curiosity, I started counting the number of hits that it took to kill a few of the enemies. This giant scorpion took 28 hits to kill. Not too unreasonable, I suppose. This troll-looking thing called a Hellrot? 76 hits to kill! Son of a bitch! This Cerberus only took 7 hits. I don't get that. And I'd probably be fine showing it since the graphics are so blurry, but the harpy enemy has giant swinging naked titties! I did not count how many hits she took to kill. I was otherwise occupied. They're just so round and squishy. But yeah, even though I'm immortal and slaughtering everything in sight, the game is still unwinnable. After I'd killed five or six enemies, the game started bugging out real badly. I have to run all over the place to get new objective markers to appear, and when I finally find a new enemy, it runs like hell away from me before vanishing into thin air. Then I track down this thing running away called a Leviathan, and when I finally corner it and get it to fight, it keeps spontaneously disappearing. Invulnerable and everyone fleeing for their lives, now I really am Darth Vader. I kill the Leviathan, and no more objective markers appear. No matter what you do, the game eventually collapses into being unplayable. And even when it's playable, that just means walking through an empty map, mashing one button, and being bored. Sam Hill is outrageously glitchy and boring crap. The one major thing in the game's favor is that it's really easy to get the game's platinum trophy. All you have to do is kill each of the enemies at least once, so you just keep resetting the game until every type of bad guy has spawned at random. Well, there is one other major improvement over Ponce's other games. Touching water actually makes you swim now! Holy crap! One last game, thank crap. Shadow the Ronin, Revenge to the Samurai. Gilson's newest game, having cursed the PS4 store in April 2020 because I guess he figured this year hasn't sucked enough yet. A warrior must not die without first using his weapons. A critic must not judge a game before actually playing it. Hasn't stopped people with The Last of Us 2, but that is none of my business. Apparently for this game, Gilson decided the one thing his games were missing was a playable intro. The game's opening credits play over a scene where you ride a horse through a small town. Except the game feels like it can barely run this. It's got horrendous frame rate and laggy controls. Nothing happens, and then for no reason, you just appear in a new open field in a different year. There are two objective markers, and I follow one to a dragon that, of course, kills me in one hit. But then instead of restarting this level like usual, I warp to a completely new area, with the timestamp reading some 400 years earlier. Someone please explain to me what in the hell is going on? To save some time and confusion, I'll skip ahead. You get sent to this island where you spawn in front of a cross every time you die, and it seems to be some kind of a hub world. The game has several levels, and you pick the one that you want to play by swimming to one of the eight or so warp pads indicated by the markers. The only problem is, it takes a small eternity to swim over to a level's warp point to pick a stage. Unless there's something I'm missing, the closest portals take a full three minutes for you to reach. Other portals look like they're at least three to four minutes away on top of that. So every time you die, you get sent here and you're forced to sit on your ass holding forward on the control stick for a full three minutes at bare minimum before you're allowed to play the game some more. Okay, there have been plenty of games I've played like Sonic Adventure, Donkey Kong 64, and Super Paper Mario, where the level entrances in the hub world are kind of spread apart and take some hiking to get to, but you don't get dumped there every time you take one hit, and there's generally some platforming or puzzles in between. At the very least, some visually appealing environments to cross over. You're not forced into a quick game of Desert Bus every time you want to open a level! I swear Ponce was ripping off the Serene Garden from Drake of the 99 Dragons, but even that game only sat you in timeout for a few seconds when you died. Not three minutes every time you take a single hit! This goes so far beyond incompetence. The rat bastard is actively trying to suck! Anyway, I swim for ages to a new level that looks about identical to the last level. This time I see a bunch of cross marks for objective markers and I follow one to this ninja dude. You have no block action in this game, your only moves are a vertical sword swing, a horizontal sword swing, and a dodge roll. And I found out in this fight that the dodge roll is so stiff and takes so long to work that you're honestly better off just running around enemies manually. The ninjas go down in one hit, but the second one still gets me. Ah, and I have to swim for another three shitting minutes to get to another level warp! 
All right, new area. The only enemy around is a dragon this time. I go up to fight it. What the hell? The dragon attacked 90 degrees clear in the wrong direction, and I still got hit? Another three minutes of swimming. Fourth world I try, ninja gets me. Your sword has such a pathetic range to its attacks, and it's tough getting close enough to an enemy to hit them without getting hit yourself. There's also something weird going on in the level, since they're filled with distant smog that would put Superman 64 to shame, filling the screen with yellow smog and butt-ugly lens flares off the sun. But if you get into combat, the fog instantly clears away, and it looks like a real game again. Why would you do that? Fighting another dragon, I dodge away from the dragon's attack, its claws come nowhere near me, and it still registers as a hit, and I die. This is a damn joke! It's been a long time since I've seen a game with hit detection this abysmal! But this is my white whale, and I will kill a dragon, damn it! Yes! <laughs> Booyah! All right, you fight the enemies by running up to them, throwing one attack, and running away. Sod the dodge roll, it just gets you killed. The dragon that I downed only took four hits, and this game doesn't have a stamina meter, so you can run indefinitely, and the controls won't freeze up on you. You know, the sad thing is, if you didn't get put in timeout every time you took a hit, this would probably be Gilson's best game yet. Lowest hurdle ever cleared, but what can you do? Near as I can tell, the game has no ending. Enemies just keep spawning into a level endlessly, no matter how many you kill. The game again has a platinum trophy for killing all of the bosses at least once, but unlike Sam Ale, where all the bosses were at least different monster models, here every boss seems to be the exact same one dragon cloned endlessly with different names stacked onto it each time. So if you don't value your time or money at all, or if you're just that desperate, you can probably get an easy platinum trophy off this piece of shit, but you have to ask yourself, giving business to this man, is it worth it? No! No! Uh, no! No! No, it is not worth it. Thus ends the current library of Gilson B. Ponce and four of the worst games on the PlayStation 4. I say current library because given his delusions of grandeur, I have no doubt that he will continue making games. Whether whatever Sony executive he's got dirt on will continue to indulge him on the PlayStation 5 remains to be seen, but if he does, I'm sure he'll continue to make cutting-edge next-generation consoles look embarrassing.